Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Congresswoman Susan Wild. Everybody, let's give a warm Lehigh Valley welcome to the next Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. You know, the fact that the Senator is here today is truly a testament to the fact that this entire presidential election may very well come down to what happens in Pennsylvania, especially right here in Pennsylvania 7. In so many ways, this community is a microcosm of our entire state. We're a proudly diverse community that is bound by common values. We understand that's what this country is all about. And that's why on Tuesday, this community is going to stand up to the president who mocked the disabled, called our troops suckers and losers, failed our Puerto Rican neighbors during their time of need, has insulted our Latinx neighbors time and again, a president who stirs the poison of white supremacy and who has scapegoated our Muslim neighbors based on their faith. In this community, we don't do that. We are gonna turn a page and say no to bigotry and hatred. But here's the thing. In this election, we're gonna do so much more than say no. We are all here today because together we are committed to doing everything we can to elect a president and a vice president whose focus will be ma making our lives better. An administration that is for the working people, not the 1%. An administration that believes organized labor is a good thing not one that is out to destroy it. An administration that knows we need an economy that works for working and middle class folks. An administration that believes in the fundamental concept that health care is a human right. And don't let us forget an administration that believes in science. It is their sense of fundamental decency and respect for their fellow human beings that makes me so proud to be supporting Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We've tried having a president who only asks, what's in it for me? The result has been catastrophic for this country. We desperately and urgently need to get some proven public servants in these offices who have spent their entire lives working on behalf of others. That's what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are all about. And that's why I couldn't be pre prouder to support the Democratic ticket for president and vice president in this election. They represent what this country is and everything that it can be. They represent the better future that we all choose. We just have to get them elected. I love the energy here today. We just have to keep that going until the polls close tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Let me tell you this. The entire country is counting on us. Call your friends, call your family, have those difficult conversations. Tell them why this election matters to you personally, whether it's about a pre-existing condition or 
child care or needing a higher education, whatever your personal story is, talk to people on a personal level about why this matters to you. And then tell them why it is so important to vote for Democrats up and down the ballot, all the way up and all the way down. These next hours are going to be some of the most crucial in our nation's history. And it gives me enormous confidence to know that Vice President Biden and Senator Harris are leading the effort. They are fighting so hard for us. Let's bring this home for them. It gives me, it gives me enormous confidence to know that Pennsylvania 7 is working to make this happen. Because we can do it. Yes, we can. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the senior senator from the state of Pennsylvania, Senator Bob Casey. I want you to do something for me, one favor before I get into my brief remarks. The next Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, is right over here, not far away. Let's give her a big Lehigh Valley welcome. All right. Keep going. All right. That was good. Now I got one question for you, Lehigh Valley. Are you ready to win for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the whole Democratic ticket? One of the reasons we're going to win this race is because at a time of crisis for our country, Joe Biden knows how to lead. He's prepared to lead. He's got the plans to lead. And we're going to make sure that he wins so America wins. Now, we know the president, that other candidate's been through Pennsylvania. We know what he has said. We know what he told folks a couple of years ago when he was running. He said he was going to do great things for workers. He is no doubt the most anti-worker, anti-union president in the history of the country. We're going to change that in a couple of days. Here's, here are the facts, folks. If you look at where we were in January of 2017 in just two counties in Pennsylvania, let you guess who they are, Lehigh and Northampton, and you looked at the unemployment numbers then, there are 10,000 more people unemployed in just these two counties right now than there were then. We need a president who's going to build back better create millions of good-paying jobs. That's Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Last point on health care. We know that in these two counties, Lehigh and Northampton, more than 42,000 people got health care, and tens of thousands were protected from a pre-existing condition problem because of the Affordable Care Act. President Trump and his party are trying to take away health care we're going to stop them. We're going to elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We're going to win, and when we do, America wins. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage community leader and professor emeritus from Northampton Community College, Maria Teresa Donate.
Where are the Latinos in the house? ¿Dónde están los latinos? Que se oigan, que se escuchen. Hola, José. Encantada de estar aquí. Hace cuatro años que estoy deseosa porque tengo esta energía por dentro que si no lo digo, reviento. Hace 20 años, 28 años que nosotros, mi familia, mis tres niños, mi esposo, nos mudamos a Lehigh Valley, a Bethlehem, en busca del sueño americano. Y en los últimos cuatro años, ese sueño se convirtió en la pesadilla americana. Todos los latinos y los afroamericanos hemos sido víctimas de la discriminación y la injusticia de esta administración. Están poniendo nuestros niños en jaulas. ¿Dónde se ha visto eso? La pandemia ha afectado disproporcionalmente a nuestros latinos. Más gente, más latinos están muriendo del COVID y mucho más latinos están siendo hospitalizados. ¿Por qué? Porque nuestra gente es la gente que está en la línea de fuego, haciendo los trabajos que más nadie quiere hacer. Señores, hay que sacar a Trump de la Casa Blanca. Y esos que están gritando ahí en la calle al otro lado diciendo latinos por Trump, ¿qué es eso? Es latinos por Biden. Ya estamos cansados de que nos estén tirando papel toalla, ¿verdad? Que eso es como un insulto. Nos merecemos más. Cuidamos de, de sus niños. Sembramos sus fincas. Trabajamos doble por el mismo salario. Y sabemos que como profesionales tenemos que probarnos tres veces para que se nos reconozca. Como puertorriqueños, yo soy nacida y criada en Puerto Rico, boricua de pura cepa. Como puertorriqueños experimentamos desigualdad. La situación colonial de la isla nos hace que nos traten como ciudadanos de segunda clase. Las aportaciones federales no son las mismas que a cualquier estado de la nación. Los puertorriqueños que residen en la isla no pueden votar por el presidente. Oye, y todavía estamos esperando las aportaciones aprobadas para las víctimas del huracán María. Yo quisiera saber dónde están esos chavos. Pero como nos, nosotros como latinos tenemos diversidad de pensamiento, pero familia, tenemos que unirnos como un bloque de voto. Tenemos que dejar nuestras diferencias al lado. Y tenemos que votar por Kamala Harris y Joe Biden. Mira, mañana levántate tempranito, vete y vota, llévate almuerzo y llévate comida extra para la gente que está en la línea contigo. Nosotros los latinos nos gusta compartir la comida, ¿verdad? Y después que tú votes, llama a tu vecino, llama a tus familiares y pregúntale, ¿necesitas transportación? Es más, esta noche todavía se pueden hacer llamadas. Así es que, let me say something in English because, you know, they're babies. <laughs> so, I was just saying that we are not a monolithic thinkers, but that this time we need to constitute a voting block to elect our Democratic President, Joe Biden. We need to get out to vote. We need to elect Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Tomorrow, get up early, go and vote. Call your neighbor in case they need transportation to the polls. Call your friends. Nobody should stay home. And now, the important part of the program. Woo! 
It's my special honor and privilege to introduce the person that will restore our Latino rights in this nation, the great, the next Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. introduction where is she thank you for that introduction it's so good to be with you guys and my friend Bob Casey and everybody look at this incredible group of leaders look at this look at this and yes the path to the White House leads through Pennsylvania yes it does and you all are gonna make it happen you are gonna make it happen so I'm so glad to be with you this afternoon. You know, we're all here. At Joe's in Pennsylvania, Jill's in Pennsylvania, Doug's in Pennsylvania, I'm in Pennsylvania, you're in Pennsylvania, we're in Pennsylvania. <laughs> we're all here. It's happening right here. <laughs> Biden, and this is Biden country, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> That's right. So we're ready to get this done. We're going to get this done. Tomorrow is election day. In about 24 hours, Pennsylvania will determine who will be the next president of the United States. And, you know, I did an event earlier, and I just decided, you know, I'm kind of done talking about the guy in the White House. So... If y'all don't mind, I'm just going to talk about Joe. Let's talk about Joe. Let's do that. Let's do that. So, you know, um, Joe has been talking about the fact that this is a moment that really requires real leadership in our country because we're going through so many crises that all hit at the same time. And so Joe talks about four crises in particular. Um, one about, obviously, this public health pandemic, right? It's killed over 225,000 Americans in just the last several months. And, you know, what breaks everybody's heart is knowing how many people spent their last hours, days on earth without a family member nearby. You know, for any of us, I have experienced losing a family member that you love and not being able to actually just be in, with them and hold their hands in those last hours. Over 9 million people have contracted this virus. 
Doctors are talking about the long-term health consequences, including things like lung scarring. And here's the thing. It didn't have to be this way. It didn't have to be this bad if we had had real leadership in the White House. And, you know, here's the thing. Now, remember, Joe's been out of office, but back in March, not having the first half, first-hand information that we know you know who had, thanks to Bob Woodward, let's always thank him. But Joe, back in March, without the inside information, said, I know what this is, I know it is serious, and we should take it seriously and put in place a plan. Joe had a plan back in March. Because remember, Joe has dedicated his life to public service. Joe was there to deal with Ebola. Joe knows the responsibility of the highest office in the land to deal with issues like this. So back in March, Joe talked about a plan. Joe understands when we're dealing with a public health crisis, we need to kick in one of the most fundamental responsibilities of government, which is to concern itself with the health and well-being of the American people. Joe understood that back when, when he and President Obama, Barack Obama president, Joe Biden vice president, pushed through the Affordable Care Act, which was one of the most major and influential public policies we'd seen since Social Security. It brought health care to over 20 million people that didn't have it. It protected People with pre-existing conditions, raise your hand or hunk if you know somebody with diabetes or high blood pressure or lupus or a breast cancer survivor. And you know, I mean, Pennsylvania knows Joe more than most. He's spent far too much time in a hospital with the people he loves. He knows that when we're talking about health care, it's about understanding that nobody should suffer, that nobody should go through unnecessary pain simply because they don't have enough money in their back pocket. Joe knows that access to health care should be a right and not just a privilege of those who can afford it. So everything's at stake in this election because Joe is saying, unlike the other guy who's trying to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, Joe's saying, no, we're going to build on my success, meaning his success, and we're going to expand protections. We're going to bring down the cost of premiums, bring down the cost of prescription drugs. We're going to lower eligibility for Medicare to age 60. We're going to deal with the fact that when we're talking about health care, you've got to understand the body doesn't just start from the neck down. It also includes the neck up, and that's called mental health care. There's a real choice in this election. Joe talks about the fact that we're in the midst of an economic crisis, in large part because of this pandemic. But look, we also know even before the pandemic, far too many Americans were working two and three jobs to try and pay the rent and put food on the table. Joe understands that in the America we believe in, nobody should have to work more than one job to pay the rent and put food on their table. Joe says, you want to talk to me about the economy and ask me how the economy is doing? Then I ask you, how are working people doing? How are working families doing? Joe understands that when they pass that tax bill benefiting the top 1% and the biggest corporations of America, causing us to deal with a $2 trillion deficit, that that wasn't about working people. And if we get done what we need to get done, Pennsylvania, in the next 24 hours, Joe and I are about to get rid of that tax bill. Yeah. 
and invest that money in working families, invest that money in infrastructure, building back up our roads and bridges, partnering with the building trades, the carpenters and the plumbers and the electricians, knowing their apprenticeship programs are the best in the world building up America's workforce, investing in our auto industry, making our auto industry the largest manufacturer of electric vehicles. <laughs> investing in working families, not raising taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year, but also investing in working families knowing you should never pay more than 7% in your income in childcare. Investing in our students who come from families who make less than $125,000 saying, if you go to a four-year public school, including an HBCU, you will go for free. That's how Joe thinks about the economy. There's a real clear choice in this race. Let's deal with what Joe, being a student of American history, and having the courage to speak truth knows we need to do with a long overdue reckoning on racial injustice in America. Joe has the courage to speak a term the other guy will never say, Black Lives Matter. Joe knows, look, it may be uncomfortable for some folks to hear, but we got to deal with this. We have to deal with the fact that blacks and Latinos have been three times likely to contract COVID, twice as likely to die from it. We need to deal with the fact that our native brothers and sisters have the highest rates of diabetes of any population in our country. We need to deal with these things. Joe knows that we are done with a so-called leader who has spent full time trying to sow hate and division between us, trying to get Americans to turn on each other. We're done with that. And Joe knows that the true measure of strength of any human being is measured not based on who you beat down, it's measured based on who you lift up. There's a real cl clear choice in this election. Joe talks about the climate crisis, because he's clear about that too. He's clear about the fact that, you know, you all you know I come from California. He's clear that the West Coast is burning from California to Oregon to Washington over to Colorado, wildfires. I've met with families who are evacuated never to be able to return to their home. Firefighters who are fighting fires while their own homes are burning. My brother-in-law is a firefighter. Up and down the Gulf Coast states, People being battered by those storms. You know, there have been five named storms this year alone. And you know, they name a storm because it's really bad. In the Midwest, farmers that have lost a whole season of crops because of the floods. Joe says, we need to embrace the science. We need to see this is an imminent knocking on our door harm. And we need to get to it. But Joe sees in a moment of crisis a moment of opportunity, that this is the time then to invest in infrastructure, invest in renewable energy, invest, as I said earlier, in our auto industry and our investment in being the greatest manufacturer of electric vehicles. Because you see, that's the kind of leader Joe is. And Pennsylvania, you know Joe. You know Joe. Joe has seen more hardship than most should ever have to experience. Joe has suffered more loss than anybody really should have to suffer. And I'm going to tell you something about Joe that I know and I know you know. In the midst of any crisis he has faced, 
He sees always a moment where hard work and determination and faith can see you through to see the opportunity of the moment. And on all of these issues, that's where he's at. Because he believes in the American people. And he believes in the strength of who we are as a nation. So I'm here to thank you all for everything you've been doing these last years, months, days, hours. Um, I'm here to remind you, I mean, if you're here, you're a leader. So I'm here to remind us all that we still got a lot of time and a lot of work left to do before this election is over. Got a lot of work to do. And we want to make sure everyone votes. And, and, and as leaders, I'm sure you have been approached with a question I have been approached with, which is, why should I vote? And essentially, I believe there are three reasons that all of us should vote. One, let's honor the ancestors. Let's honor the ancestors. You know, this year we lost a great American hero, Congressman John Lewis. John Lewis, who fought, who shed blood on that Edmund Pettus Bridge for our right to vote and the right for black people to vote in America. Let's honor the ancestors. This year we celebrated the passage of the 19th Amendment. Because those suffragettes a hundred years ago in all their white were marching and shouting saying women have a right to vote too. And let's always Bethlehem also be true to history. Black women couldn't vote until 1965. <laughs> Got to deal with that. But let's honor the ancestors because... They imagined a moment like this where they wanted us to stand up for our rights and stand up for our ideals. So that's a reason to vote. Reason number two, everything is at stake. Everything is at stake. The future of our democracy, our standing around the world, our commitment to working people, our commitment to the dignity and integrity of our leaders and each one of us. Everything is at stake. Number three, you know, I've been traveling the country. I've been here in Pennsylvania before, of course, and um, I was just in... Georgia, I was in North Carolina, I was in Texas and Florida just in the last couple of days. Um, all over our country, you know that there have been very, very serious attempts being made now for years to try and suppress the vote. Attempts to try and make it difficult and confusing for people to vote. I mean, look, in Texas, you know, they were picking up drop boxes. They said there would, could only be one drop box per county. I was in Houston the other day, um, in, in, in Harris County. I was in Houston, in Harris County. Four million people live in that county, one drop box. In various states, they're saying if you vote by mail, you gotta fill out your ballot and put it in one envelope. And then you got to pull it in a second envelope, and then you got to sign it right here. But then in some other states, and then you have to have a third person sign it. Yeah, like a, a different person. Like it's bananas, right? And so all of this is happening, right? I mean, you even got, I mean, they're even messing with the post office. Like the post office. The nicest people work for the post office. They're messing with the post office. And you got to end the census. And what, what we have to do, though, in this moment is ask, why do you think so many powerful people are going out of their way 
to try and make it difficult and confusing for us to vote. And I do believe it is because they know our power. They know our power. They know when we vote, things change. They know when we vote, we win. So let's not let anyone take our power from us. We will not be sidelined. We will not be silenced. We know our power. And my final point then is this. This moment will pass. And years from now, our children, our grandchildren and others, they're going to look in our face, they're going to look in our eyes, each one of us. And they will ask us, where were you at that moment? They will ask us, Where were you? And here's the thing I know. We will tell them so much more than just how we felt. We will tell them what we did. We will tell them we organized. We will tell them we mobilized. We will tell them we emailed and we texted and we called till folks got sick of us, but we knew they'd get over it. And we will tell them, Bethlehem, that we elected Joe Biden the next president of the United States. Thank you. Just because the length of your hair ain't long And they often criticize you for your skin tone Wanna hold your head high cause you a pretty woman Get your runway stride home and keep it going Girl, live your life I just want to be my yeah, yeah. Don't don't be yourself Follow me, follow me, follow me Girl, be yourself That's why I be myself Celebrating the things that everyone told me would never happen, but 